Good morning and a happy and blessed Pentecost to all of you out there. We are fortunate this morning to have Ben and Amy Fugate who were helping to lead worship uh, with the playing of the bells. They played a selection and we'll hear them again as we worship together this morning. This is the day that we celebrate in the life of the church, uh, the sending of the Spirit. The Spirit which gives us counsel, the Spirit which gives us wisdom and power, the Spirit which inspires us to have faith in our God. We celebrate that in many ways. And one way is to wear red, to remember this day, to remember the coming of the Spirit. And remember my challenge from last week, it was to wear red today, wherever you are, to go ahead and wear red and take a picture of that and comment it uh, in the comments section here this morning or send it to me in an email, Drew at cotc.org, or to send me a picture of something that reminds you of the coming of the Spirit, maybe a, a campfire or a place in your life where you felt the Spirit most closely. Closely. Send those and we're going to put them together into a Pentecost album and we're going to put that out on Facebook to show that the Spirit is doing again what it did a couple of thousand years ago. It is spreading out widely and coming down on people in many locations to share God's power in this world. Friends, as we gather this morning to worship, let us hear these words as God calls us to worship. Remember the promise of the Lord. God will pour out the Spirit on all flesh. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, interceding with sighs too deep for words. The Spirit of God renews the earth. Bless the name of the Lord. Friends, let us pray this morning. God, our Creator, earth has many languages, but your gospel proclaims your love to all nations in one heavenly tongue. Make us messengers of the good news, that through the power of your Spirit, all the world may unite in one song of praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, let's now join together in a litany for Pentecost as we call upon the Spirit to come and to join us in our worship, to come and to join us in our lives, to walk with us each and every day. Holy Spirit, Creator, in the beginning you moved over the waters. From your breath, all creation drew life. Without you, life turns to dust. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Counselor, by your inspiration, the prophets spoke and acted in faith. You clothed them in power to be bearers of your word. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, power. You came as fire to Jesus' disciples. You gave them voice before the rulers of this world. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, sanctifier. You created us children of God. You make us the living temple of your presence. You intercede within us with sighs too deep for words. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, giver of life, you guide and make holy the church that you create. You give gifts, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, that the whole creation may be transformed. Come, Holy Spirit. We think back on different times in our life when we have felt the presence of the Spirit most fully. Maybe we didn't even realize it was the Spirit, but we remember how the Spirit came to us and gave us wisdom and inspiration, gave us power. I can remember just a couple of years ago when I had the opportunity to travel to southern France, the Taze community, and I was there for the first night to worship uh, with all the people, and there were a few thousand of us there at the time, and it was the day of Pentecost in the life of the church. And there were people there from the United States and from England, from France, from Germany, from Brazil, South Korea, China, people from all over the world. But in one voice, together, we sang Veni Sancte Spiritus, which is Latin for Come, Holy Spirit. 
I think in, in my life that's one of the most powerful situations that I've ever experienced when I could clearly tell that the Spirit was at work drawing all these believers together in this one place to have this experience of the coming of God's Spirit. It truly was the Pentecost moment uh, for me. It was beautiful, it was powerful, and it was a, a wonderful experience that I was able to have. And I'm seeing that we have something going on technical, so give me one momento. And we're going to sing at the end. And we're going to sing at the end. Okay, dokie. So we're going to change up our order a little bit because the computer didn't want to uh, play along with our rules this morning. So if you would give me one second, I have to grab my Bible. And instead of singing now where we normally would, we'll sing at the end. But while I step away for a second, grab your Bible and get it ready. We're going to open up to the book of Acts chapter 2. We're going to read together or hear together the story of the very first Pentecost uh, in Jerusalem. So go to Acts chapter 2. comes right after the Gospel of John. So open up to that Acts chapter 2. So we hear this story this morning from uh, that second chapter in Acts, the story of the first Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they too shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And our second lesson is from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, uh, first letter to the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 3 through 13. So feel free to flip over there or just listen in as we hear this word from Paul this morning. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services but the same Lord. 
and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by the one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. So we think back just to last week as we thought about the ascension of Christ. And in that story, Jesus tells the disciples to stay put, stay right where they are until the Spirit comes and gives them God's power to be able to leave that place and to do other things. And so this week, we actually hear what happens about 50 days later. As the Spirit comes and gives them the power to be able to speak and understand and to do the things that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians. But we have to consider for a moment that these disciples who were never too patient, these disciples who were constantly asking Jesus, is now the time for you to restore the kingdom to Israel? Is now the time when God will become powerful in Israel again? Is now, is now, is now the time? They kept asking Jesus, these unpatient disciples. And yet they're able to wait. They're able to change the calendar of their lives, to change the trajectory and the way that they handle things. They're able to do that because they knew that something big was about to come. They had seen the resurrected Christ. They'd experienced Him. They had spoken to Him. They had eaten at table together with Him. They'd met Him on the Emmaus Road or on a beach. They had had a commissioning moment with Him. They had been told to go back to Galilee and start the work again. So they knew that this message that Christ preached and gave on to them had to have power in it. And so they were willing to stop their lives to turn and reorient to a different way, to wait for the Spirit to come. And when the Spirit finally came, it amazed. Luke tells us this in Acts two or three different times, that they, people are amazed, they're perplexed, they have no idea what's going on, because there's these people from all over the world who are able to understand one another in all these various different languages, and yet they're able to speak that one common language together and understand what they are saying. And they're all focused in their work around the power of God's deeds in the world. They saw right in front of them on that first Pentecost the manifestation of the grace of our God. They saw these gifts coming into reality. They saw what God was up to in the world and that God wasn't just going to do this salvation, redemption work all by God's self. God was inviting in the 11 and the hundreds of others and the crowds that gathered and everybody that was there. God was inviting them into that restorative work. And that's where Paul picks up in the story. That's where Paul starts talking in 1 Corinthians 12 about the power of the grace of God. If we were reading this in Greek, we would hear it clearly that Paul says that the charismata, the gifts that are given to the disciples come from the grace, the charis of God. God does this because we have been called to be partners with God by the power of the Spirit to do this work in the world. These gifts that we have all been given, all of us, not one of us or a couple of us or some of us. Paul is very painstakingly clear in 1 Corinthians 12 that everybody in the body of Christ, every single one of us has been given a gift, a different gift in some way to be used for the common good of the church and the world. 
many of us struggle in our lives to figure out what exactly is my gift. I don't feel like I have a lot of gifts. I'm not all that powerful. What are my gifts? We have to rest assured, first of all, that we have been given this grace from God, this grace, this gift, to be able to serve the church and the greater world. Sometimes it seems as though our, our gifts are rather simple or silly, and yet they're not. Because God doesn't just hand out gifts for the heck of it. God is handing these gifts on for an ultimate purpose, what God is working for in the world, which is the redemption and the restoration of the creation. We know people in our lives who always have a wise thought. They are the people that we always turn to for a word of advice when we are perplexed. We're not sure which direction to go. And there are those people amongst us who have wisdom to be able to share with us. That is a gift that God has given. We know people in our lives who are incredibly intelligent. They are able to figure out problems and they have many forms of intelligence. Paul isn't saying here in 1 Corinthians 12, well, intelligence is only those who have gone to college. Now, there's a lot of people that have never spent a day in college and they are smarter than people who spent four, five, six, seven, eight, ten years in college. Because they have knowledge. They have a knowledge base and we need them in our lives. Those are people who too have received a gift of the Spirit. There are people who are able to bring healing to this world. And if there was ever a time we needed healing, now is it. We have 100,000 of our fellow citizens who are dead from a virus. And we are separating from each other. We have people who are rioting in the streets. We have people who are clamoring to have their voices heard. We have people who are trying to silence those voices. We have people on both sides of many issues who are separating from each other. Families being torn apart. Neighbors who won't speak to each other anymore. Violence, death, destruction. This is not what God has desired for God's creation, for God's people. We need those people right now, more than ever before, who have been given this grace of healing to step up and to share that gift with our world. We need them to speak those words, those healing, restorative words of justice and of love and of peace. We don't need more violence. We don't need more destruction. We need more wisdom. We need more healing. We need to be able to come together. We need to be able to listen, even if we don't agree with a conclusion that a friend or a neighbor or a stranger makes. We need to have the patience to listen, and our healers, those healers in our world that have been gifted by God, are able to bring communities back together. Now we need the Spirit to come through our healers to bring restoration to our world, to bring peace in the midst of this chaos. Peace, we can't deceive ourselves. Peace is not the absence of difference. It's not the absence of chaos or separation in certain issues. It's the ability to be able to live together in the tension of difference, of separateness, of diversity. That's what peace truly is, is being able to live together. And we need our healers. We need our healers now more than ever before. We don't need more 120 character tweets sent out on the internet. We need people to love and to come together. We don't need to make a cool post on Facebook. We need to actually hold hands, to gather and join together as human beings who share this space and time. We need to be able to come back together and to hear one another as we speak our words, our words of truth, our words of pain, our words of struggle and frustration. We need our healers. We need our spirit to come. We have to have faith, too. Faith, Paul includes in 1 Corinthians 12 as one of the gifts of the Spirit. We have to have faith that this is not the best that the world can do, and that God is working through us, has faith in us, and puts faith to us to be able to restore and redeem the world that we love and that God loves, the place that God created to be the home with us and us with our God. 
We have to have faith and trust that God is up to something much bigger, much more powerful than what we see right now. A series of bad deeds, a series of deaths are not all that we can do. It's not the best we can do. We can do better. We have to have faith that God, by the power of the Spirit, is calling us to that. We have to have faith. And that faith comes from only one source. And that is the Holy Spirit. This week I heard a powerful quote from uh, Martin Luther, the great reformer and theologian. He said that, I believe that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, or even come to Him. But instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the Gospel and has enlightened me with His gifts. Friends, we are going to do nothing on our own. We are not going to heal our communities. We're not going to be able to listen and to love and to support and find justice and peace all by ourselves. We need the Spirit. We need to call on the Spirit and call for it to come again. With a rush of wind, with tongues over each, being able to hear in those different languages, those languages of justice, those languages of peace, that need, that desire to come back together, not to separate. We have to call on the Spirit to come again, to come again in power and to heal and restore and renew our communities. We don't need more explosions or shootings or bombs or destruction. That will get us nothing. Dr. King told us that, that violence begets violence and brings more darkness into a night that is already devoid of stars. We don't need more of that. We need less of that. We need more listening. We need more ability to sit down with each other, no matter what our differences are, whether they're racial or ethnic or religious or our sexual orientation or how we vote. We need to be able to sit and love and respect that we are all human beings sharing this time and space. And that we need to be able to listen to each other. We need to be able to love one another. We need to be able to have an understanding. So this day, this morning, this Pentecost, we need to call upon the Spirit to come again. To come again in power and renew and redeem and restore us. To come again with that rush of wind and the tongues of fire that we would hear in all the tongues we speak. Tongues crying out for justice. Tongues crying out for peace. Tongues crying out for healing. Tongues crying out to be heard again. That we would all sit and listen. Friends, let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, Holy Breath of God. Come again in power and in glory. Come again with a rush of wind. Come and place a tongue of fire on us. Come again to give us the ability to listen. Come again, Holy Spirit, that we would know the gifts that we have and we would use them for the common good. Not to boast in our own abilities, not to make ourselves look great, but to give glory and honor to our God who gives these gifts. Come, Holy Spirit, holy breath of God. Breathe life into our dead souls. Breathe hope and faith into our hearts. Give wisdom and knowledge to our minds that we would be a whole people again. A holy people. A people who come together as human beings. Who would share this time and space even in our differences, even in our diversities. And we would come together to celebrate the goodness, the love, and the beauty of our God. Come, Holy Spirit, Holy Breath of God. We call upon you this day, this day of Pentecost, to come in power once again and to fill us. Amen. Friends, let us join our, our voices together wherever we are as we sing this song. And this song is not just going to be a song. It is going to be our prayer. Our prayer calling upon the Spirit. So let us sing out wherever we are. It shouldn't amaze me, but it always does how the Spirit works. You know, we, we called it this morning a, a technical problem or an issue that uh, didn't allow us to be able to sing the verses at the beginning and then at the end. But I now realize that that was an action of the Spirit. 
That final song that we were able to sing together was a beautiful prayer that had we broken it up would not have been the same. We wouldn't have heard the powerful message being shared through it. We wouldn't have been able to hear the completeness of the music being played that draw, drew us into that moment in time. So even right here in the midst of this time together, we have experienced the grace of our God bringing us that gift by the Spirit. Friends, I commend each of you to go out from this time wherever you are and to be vassals of God's Holy Spirit, to be those who walk in the power of our Christ, those who are called to kingdom-building redemptive work, to do work of peace and to call for justice and to do justice, to love our God with your whole self, to be proclaimers of the good news of our Christ, that wherever you are, Christ would be met and the Spirit would be felt. Friends, go out now and use those gifts, that grace that God has given you, to share God's good news in God's world. Till we see one another again, may God be with you.